that's the place where we stopped uh, two days ago. Uh, we basically were done with that with that question. If you remember, we we found a solution to this system. This system. Uh, we did this in the with the Gaussian elimination this time, and uh, the solution enabled us to see that actually, I mean, the the way we did the solution enabled us to see that the result we come up with is in fact has some geometric structure in it. The result is this. It was the, the answer to the question was this line, the line in the vector form like this. Uh, the reason I brought this up again is just because I want to introduce one extra concept in relation to the row which forms, and this example is just very good to introduce that. It's called the reduced row which form. It's just a minor development of the row which form the way I introduced it. Uh, before, let me just tell you this, reduced row which form. Remember, I gave you these two criteria which you have to test when you look at the metrics and you want to decide if it's row which form or not row which form. Now, on the top of those two criteria, if you want to test that the matrix is in reduced row which form, you test uh, another two criteria. One of them you say it sounds like this. All pivots are unital, so not just non-zero number, but unital. And that's where your third elementary operation will be useful because you'll be scaling this coefficients out. And the second requ uh, requirement uh, for the matrix to be named reduced row which form is the that you have zero entries above pivots. That's the second requirement which is which which is needed to be satisfied in order to claim that the matrix is a row, reduced row channel form. The reason I told you on this slide because I'm going to take this matrix now, this one, and that will be the last time I do numerically I do re the reduction to the row channel form. Uh, I, will, I will use this matrix and I will develop it further to make a reduced row channel form out of it. Because here you see, not every pivot is unital yet. I mean, we have one offending pivot down here, but we can easily fix that by canceling seven up, by multiplying the row by the one on seven. And the other thing we have to address are uh, entries above pivots, these two entries, and this entry. They are known zero entries, so these are also can be addressed by the elementary row operations. If we can address that, we will end up with a reduced row channel form. Computationally, it's not uh, it's not super super effective to do that, but just uh, from the point of view of knowing extra term, it's and some other benefits actually some other benefits come from the reduced row channel form, not in terms of the solutions, but so let me do that. <coughs> If I, uh, well, I, I did it here on this part of uh, on this part of the slide. Uh, I think the first time, yeah. So at first, at first, look at this matrix. I'm going to cancel this seven. That will that will meet this requirement. All pivots will be one after that. Easy canceling. It will be the rest of the event. You see, after I do that, uh, it will be one here and it will be negative one here. The rest of the matrix will be identical to that. I will open it rather quickly. I don't expect you to copy that, but if you want, go ahead. So that's the, you see, I didn't, I didn't, any, I didn't uh, make a record of the operation I just performed. So we performed this operation. R3 went into 1, 7 of R3. This is the elementary row operation we performed here, and which converted this matrix into this matrix. Now I will vanish these two elements, and I will vanish them by, I'm going to multiply the last row now. Well, I don't need to multiply it. I will subtract this last row from the second one. That will vanish this element without ruining my matrix being row echelon form. That's important. You have to, when I say we have to vanish this, we have to vanish this to meet this requirement, but we still have to meet the other two requirements for the row echelon form. You have to keep this in mind. So when I vanish this, of course, I, at the back of my at the back of my head, I'm, I keep in mind I have to keep my matrix row which will form all the time. So in order to vanish this two, I will use this pivot because all of the other entries will not be affected because we have zeros here already. And to vanish this element, I will use this pivot again, but this time I will add the third row to the second one. So the two operations I'm, I just described, here they are. This one and this one. If I do these two operations, this part of the matrix will, will stay unchanged. These two will go into zero. Something will happen here. Some alterations will happen in this part of the matrix. In fact, easy alterations. And 
And so now we one step away from the perfect reduced row echelon form because we have to cancel this element as well. We can cancel that by subtracting this time the second row from the first one. By doing so, will not affect anything else. We will not affect this achievement. These zeros will be zeros. The only change will happen here on the right hand side again. So if I do this operation, the final reduced row echelon form will be like this. So you have to perform this vanishing of the elements above the pivots in the right order in order to keep the matrix row echelon form all the time, in order not to ruin the, your previous achievements. If you compare what we come up, up here, I mean, if you now, if you do your back substitution from this matrix, remember our solution went like this. We took a system, we extracted augmented matrix corresponding to that system, we reduced the matrix to, to, to the row echelon form, then we converted the matrix back to the system. If you convert this matrix back to the system, this is a column for x1, this is a column for x2, this is a column for x3, this is a column for x4. If you convert this system back, let me just take this, so these are my names of the columns. If you take this matrix back to the system, you, will, you, you won't be needing any back substitution, in fact. It will be this system straight away. Look at this. x4 comes here, 1. Uh, x4 equal negative 1. This equation. Second line gives you, uh, well, second line gives you just uh, lambda value uh, because it's a non it's a non leading column. We remember we parameterize that, uh, but second line can be used to find the value for x2. From here, it will be negative eight plus lambda, sharply this, and. Uh, for the first line, if you use the first line to find the value for x1, uh, it will be 4, 4, take lambda. Here it is. So, in fact, these steps, these steps we did here, they effectively, they correspond, my, correspond to my back substitution by conversion from this one down to this system.